Hey, it's Sam. We have the new moon in Cancer on Saturday, the 26th of July. Now, this new moon in Cancer will take place in the nakshatra of Pushya. Pushya is, it literally means the nourisher or nourishment, and it's related to the teats of a cow, the cow's udders. And this is a pretty obvious um, reference to the sign of cancer. Of course, this is the deep connection that the nakshatras have with the sidereal or stellar zodiac. One of the great things about Vedic astrology is you see the connection between the signs, the zodiac signs, and the stars, the nakshatras. Um, and so this nakshatra of Pushya is ruled by the god called Brihaspati. Brihaspati is the priest of the gods, and it's re it's also related to Jupiter. It's the deity that is related to Jupiter, and Jupiter has to do with children. Again, so you see this deep connection to Cancer, which is about nurturing children. And there's a very powerful story in this nakshatra of Pushya, which really illustrates not only Cancer, but this section of the sky long, long ago. Brihaspati's wife had a had an affair with Chandra, or actually Soma, Chandra Soma, the moon god. Brihaspati's wife was named Tara. It was the most beautiful woman. And the moon, or Soma, or Chandra, fell in love with Tara, and they ran away and had an affair. And as these things always happen, the result of that affair was a child. Chandra was pregnant when she came back, and she didn't want to come back, not Chandra, um, Tara was pregnant when she came back, and first of all, she didn't want to come back because her and um, Chandra were so much in love, but when she did come back, she was pregnant, and it was unclear who, who's the child, who the child belonged to, so it was determined that the child belonged to Chandra, and so Brihaspati could have sent the child away or, you know, punished Tara or punished the child or treated the child harshly and cruelly like you often see in these Vedic myths. You know, the stepchild is mistreated. But Brihaspati didn't. Brihaspati raised the child as his own, loved the child regardless of his origin. And this is a very important lesson about the nature of cancer and that selfless love. Just because the child arrived as the product of, you know, some kind of an affair or some cheating doesn't mean it was the child's fault. And once we have the child, we need to love the child. We need to nurture the child. We need to nourish the child. Who cares where it came from and all of that stuff. So this is an important lesson and an important quality of cancer um, is this quality of selfless love where the mother and the parents love the child selflessly. And it's not just energy that has to do with parents and children. It also has to do with the way, for instance, like we love our pets. Anytime there's selfless love and nurturing and wanting to provide, or the way a, a great teacher loves their students, where there's no self-interest involved, that kind of devotional love. And that is in contrast to the conditional love that we experience with adults, and most notably in relationships that love is related to Venus and primarily to the sign of Libra, where, there's, where it's conditional, where we are aware of every single thing that's communicated and whether or not it's fair and equal and even. That's the currency of romantic relationships and adult interactions. But the other kind of love, the selfless love, the devotional love, is where we ask for nothing in return. Just like... Brihaspati didn't ask for anything in return of the child. The child arrived, and the child needs to be loved and nurtured. And that's the nature of Pushya. So we have a f new moon in this nakshatra. Again, the new moon is where sun and moon come together at the same point, and that initiates a new cycle, like the sperm meeting the egg. It's like giving birth to that thing. So it's that cancer cycle for 2014, that connection to the heart, and this nakshatra of Pushya, where it happens, shows the conservative, traditional 
nature of cancer and the need to connect with that pure sattvic energy, pure sattvic love. Sattvic means pure, rather than the conditional love. So, the next month or so is a time for you to really imbibe that pure love that doesn't ask for reciprocity. It's okay to ask for reciprocity. We can see that in other areas of our life. But now there's a great challenge to and a great promise of devotion and being devotional which asks nothing of creation. And ultimately that's where we're headed because for instance when we love God or when we love all of existence we're not asking for anything in return. And when we just want to give we just keep giving and giving and it just keeps growing and expanding. This is important also right now because this new moon is joined exalted Jupiter. Jupiter is still highly exalted at about seven, eight degrees. And Jupiter is the planet of devotion and higher wisdom and higher meaning and purpose. And of course he's also, like I just said, Jupiter is the planet related to Brahaspati, the deity of Pushya. Now Jupiter is also combust, so it's very close to the sun right now, and when Jupiter is combust, we may doubt our faith. Those who don't have a strong faith might feel very bitter and cynical about religion and, you know, this whole idea of religion and belief are related to Jupiter, and it's very easy to lapse into cynicism in this modern world, especially because formal religions are always corrupt on some level because they're organized and all organizations are corrupt in one way or another. But you see this misinterpretation and this misappropriation of what religion is really about and the benefit of belief. And it doesn't really serve us to be cynical and um, I guess you would say um, atheist or whatever because we can, we can be all tangled up and twisted up around any organization. But the seed of religion is faith and hope and connection to a higher purpose. Everyone has some kind of philosophy and something they believe in. Everyone believes in something. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive. Even if our belief is that I don't know, that's our belief. And again, it, this is a belief because we don't know. So we have to have faith. There has to be a leap of faith in something higher or a leap of faith that we don't believe in something higher. And these are big issues right now. These are big themes right now where whatever we do believe in is being tested and purified. Because when planets are combust, they're close to the sun and the sun purifies. But they purify it by bringing up some uncomfortable, sensitive spot. So when someone has Jupiter combust in their natal chart, for instance, they often have a very sensitive spot around belief and religion. They perhaps saw a lot of religious hypocrisy when they were growing up, for instance. They saw where, you know, maybe their father <clears throat> preached about how you should be a good Christian, but then was an alcoholic or was cynic was um, you know, cynical or perhaps um, you know, a hypocrite or things like that. There's some kind of twisted up energy around what that thing rules as a karaka, as a principle. Jupiter is the principle of hope, the principle of meaning and purpose and belief. So these things are important right now as well, especially as the moon becomes new and the mind, which is the, which is the moon, becomes empty and then filled up again. So at the time that it's emptied and filling up, it, the sun is going to be joined this Jupiter directly. So it's a time for us to really, in fact, empty ourselves of our preconceived ideas and our preconceived beliefs. Even people who have a lot of beliefs. It's a good time to reevaluate them and connect that to the heart rather than have it be some kind of emotional experience that you get all jacked up on. Empty yourself and be clear and be and enter a sort of beginner's mind relationship and see what happens. So a few other things that have happened recently, and in fact this new moon is going to be aspected by Saturn in Libra because Saturn casts that waning square aspect, which means Saturn casts that square to the 10th house, Saturn in Libra is aspecting 
cancer right now and Saturn just moved direct so Saturn has been in Libra since around the end of 2011 so things that you have started since then especially as it relates to other people maybe relationships or just other connections or big commitments that have started since the end of 2011 now that Saturn is moving forward and about to leave Libra you can feel those things resolving and untangling now one thing to understand about Saturn transits in this regard it's an opportunity to make peace with things to make peace with time and the unfolding of time the way it works is that however you've honored that thing that Saturn is ruling or associating with will show your relationship with whatever is moving forward now. So for instance, if you've been in a situation where you haven't really honored the time and the commitment and the thing very well, you might find yourself on the losing end of that where it feels very bitter and sad and you feel like something is being taken from you because time is moving on and you're still stuck with things because maybe you didn't express it properly or you didn't um, you know, honor the moments that you had when they unfolded the way you would have liked, so you maybe have regrets. These are all Saturn issues, regrets and what that. We have regrets because when the moment was there, we didn't honor it with the proper level of seriousness. If you did honor things with the proper level of seriousness, then those things that are moving on, you're much more at peace with. You don't have regrets, you're not looking back, you're looking forward, you're looking forward to the new commitments rather than looking back saying oh, I wish I would have done that I have this regret I should have done that I made all these mistakes so really in many ways depending on the nature of Saturn in your natal chart it can really show which side of this spectrum you're on um, if, if you know if Saturn's powerful in your chart and more of an intelligent energy then Saturn moving directly now you know the direct motion of Saturn is going to be something that's probably much more that you're much more at peace with and we only make peace with Saturn. Saturn is where we need to make peace because we need to make peace with time and Saturn is time and the implications of time unfolding and our commitments not only to the future but how well we honored the truth of our commitments in the present when the present moment was actually present it's what time is, and that's what Saturn shows. It shows the accumulation of time. And when he goes into a sign, we'll often see something starts, and then by the time he leaves it, something is leaving. And that last retrograde motion is the last, is the kind of last opportunity to sort of get it right. And then he moves forward again, and then you say, Did we get it right? Did I get it right? I either did or I didn't. Now I'm ready to move forward into something else or let that thing go big stuff ponder this cycle since the end of 2011 and what either you're leaving behind and recommitting to or what feels like it's leaving you behind which end of the spectrum are you on so this Saturn moving direct is very important it happened this past week and it's Saturn is also aspecting that Sun moon in cancer we also have that Saturn is joined Mars. Mars is also in Libra right now. And Saturn, Mars, and Libra has shown these unfortunate tragedies with the airplane and then the crisis in Israel. And hopefully this will untangle. But as Saturn moves closer to Mars over the next month, we might see more of these, you know, more of an escalation in this, in this hostility. And hopefully things will calm down. We also have the nodes have moved into the Virgo Pisces axis now which takes some some of the pressure off of our relationships at least takes away a lot of the confusion around relationships and those things that Saturn has been ruling for the last you know two and a half years since the end of 2011 Rahu moving out of Libra has at least untangled some of that confusion but it might have introduced some frustration because Mars has moved in and then we have Mercury Venus in Gemini right now which is a powerful transit uh, because Mercury is the ruler and Venus is quite friendly in Gemini as well so it's a good time for creativity communication but it's not a good time for things like transportation and whatnot because Venus um, has been um, Venus in Ardra nakshatra now um, so 
the intensity around relationships is still happening, um, and we, you know, we might be experiencing that for the next few weeks, um, especially since Mar as Mars gets closer to Saturn in Libra, there can still be some of this relationship intensity that we're working through. Hopefully, we're not making worse with our anger and whatnot. But either way, the big thing about this update has to do with the new moon in Cancer on the 26th um, and how that begins the new cycle of Cancer energy, which is ruled by the moon, connection to the heart, the depth of the heart, not just the emotions, not just the waves on the surface of the ocean, but the depth, going deeper than just the surface emotions in the moment, going deeper to that eternal truth, that eternal heart. So for those of you who want to understand how this new moon and cancer will affect you, you can join my member site, Only One Penny, and I'll discuss this about your chart as well. Um, and you also get two weeks of forecasts, and you also get a great chart reading template to help you understand yourself. So you can follow the links on this page to get that as well. So leave me some comments, let others know, and be in touch.